This video is about measuring the consistency of the pulse per second or PPS signals from two GPS receivers. I say consistency because measuring the accuracy of the pulse per second signals is hard precisely because the signals are supposedly very accurate indeed, more accurate than my test equipment. What we can do is measure the similarity between the two GPS receivers. Specifically, these two GPS receivers. One is from Adafruit, I bought it years ago, the other is a cheap module that I think is still available from Amazon. It's easy to capture a PPS signal on an oscilloscope. Here's one. There are two characteristics of this signal that we want to examine. First, the rising edge is supposed to happen right at a one second boundary in real world time. This is why GPS receivers make such good clocks. The second characteristic is the period, the time between rising edges. My last two videos were about this design on Tang Nano FPGA boards. The design uses the signal from the Adafruit GPS receiver to accurately control the frequency with which counters count and allows timestamping events. I'll put links below. You need to see those videos to fully understand this one. This design cannot measure the accuracy of GPS PPS signals because it depends on a GPS for its own accuracy, but it is good at comparing the PPS signals from two GPS units to see how consistent they are. The event stamp timestamp is captured on the rising edge of the signal from the Amazon GPS, shown in green. The first thing we can do is have the software print the difference between the timestamps. We can compare that to the scope measurement. Let's see this in action. The rising edges from the two GPSs are supposed to be extremely close to a one second boundary in real world time. Thus, they should be close to each other. There is a scope capture on top. It's showing the rising edges of the PPS signals from the two GPS receivers. For scale, the cursor is showing a 90 nanosecond difference from the yellow trace from the Adafruit GPS. So, the rising edges are happening pretty close to each other in real time as expected. The bottom shows the output from the Pico RV32 core on the FPGA. The last column, labeled EDIF, shows the difference between the timestamps. The value is in hex. That value should match the horizontal difference that we see on the scope between the two signals. Let's skip ahead to an interesting spot and freeze the video. Here, the scope cursors show a time difference of 149.2 nanoseconds. The FPGA measured 150 nanoseconds, and that's great, but the measurement is not always this good. The Tang Nano 20K FPGA measurement unit is 10 nanoseconds, and there can be 10 nanoseconds of jitter, so I guess it could have errors of nearly 20 nanoseconds, but that's still a rather precise measurement. The FPGA is good for logging measurements. This chart shows the differences between the edges recorded over 5.6 hours. In this run, the worst case was 140 nanoseconds. But the Amazon GPS is not right next to a window, so it has poor reception, and sometimes it loses its GPS fix. So I have to delete the results when there is no fix. In summary, the rising edges of the two GPS units stay within about 150 nanoseconds. The other characteristic we want to measure is the period of the GPS signals. It should be one second. My oscilloscope measures one second periods with only three digits of precision, but the FPGA does better. This clip shows the periods of both GPS units. The first column, labeled OBS period, is the period of the Adafruit GPS. This one is controlling the frequency of the measurement clock, so it's less interesting to us. The last column, still labeled EDIF, is the period of the Amazon GPS. If it stays very close to one second, it means the periods of the two receivers are consistent. Let's look at the results of a long run. Here are the results from a 10 minute run. They are sorted in the chart. I think this makes the results easy to see. The Amazon GPS period was never off by more than 40 nanoseconds. And remember, there may be 20 nanoseconds of measurement error. So the periods of the two GPS receivers are very consistent. Maybe they're accurate also. This method does not let me be sure, but consistency is a good thing. I'll end this video here. I'll put links to the previous two videos below. This video involved trivial software changes, so I won't put them on GitHub. You can see the GitHub address for the project in the previous video's description. Thanks for watching.